Have you ever wondered what God could do with your life if you would only let Him? Think about it. The one who created you, who knows all things and loves you, is saying, trust me. Today you can exchange life as you know it for the life God wants to create in you. More than likely you heard this phrase, being saved many times, and wondered, what in the world does that mean? Am I saved or am I not? Let me refer a few scriptures to you, and let's explain what that means. Paul said to the Philippian jailer when he was in jail, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. He said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, He said, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any person should boast. Then to First Timothy, he said something similar when he said, It is a desire by God that all men would be saved. Well, what's the meaning of all this? Well, let's look at the truth for a moment. The truth is that you have sinned against God like all of us have. And that sin has separated you from God because God is holy. And sin separates us from God. And the scripture says that because of our sinful condition, it isn't just a matter of what we do that makes us a sinner. The issue is what we are on the inside. It's our spirit. It's who we really are. And the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which you and I have done, are we saved, but by His grace and love and mercy, which simply means this. You can't do enough good things to be saved for the simple reason you would never know how many good things, how long. And if you could do good things to be saved, then God would have made a terrible mistake when He sent Jesus to the cross. It is what He did. He sent Jesus Christ to the cross in order to pay your sin debt and mine in full. Let me explain that. Because you and I have sinned against God, a debt is there, and somebody has to pay the debt of our sin. And that sin has separated us from God. All of us have sinned against God. We could not go to the cross or die for someone else. Someone had to die for us and shed His blood that was absolutely perfect. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the only person who has ever lived, called the Lamb of God by John down at the sea and down at the River Jordan. And as a result of that, when Jesus Christ went to the cross and died, He shed His blood. That was God's way of paying your sin debt and mine in full. Then our responsibility is by faith to accept His death as full payment for our sin, which simply means that you and I are to accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And then again, for example, in Romans, here's what he says. He says, if you will confess with your mouth Jesus Christ as Lord of your life and believe in your heart that God did take Him to the cross and raise Him from the dead, you would be saved. And let me explain what confess means. It means that you are willing to agree with God that His Son died on the cross and paid our sin debt in full. Once you are willing to believe that, recognizing that you're a sinner, that you cannot help yourself, and you ask Him by faith to forgive you of your sins and to save you, what happens is in that moment your sins are wiped out. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. At that moment you begin a new relationship with Him. Not only is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, but heaven becomes your eternal home. You have the gift of eternal life. And here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians. He said, for example, he said, If any man or woman be in Christ, that is, you've been saved, all things are passed away, all things have become new. That is, you've become a brand new person in the eyes of God. Does it mean that you'll be perfect? No. Does it mean that you'll never sin again? No. But it means now. You and I falter and fall and sin at times in our life. The blood of Jesus Christ, he says, is continually cleansing us from all sin. So once you've trusted Christ as your Savior and you sin against Him, you ask Him to forgive you, not on the basis that you're going to be perfect, not on the basis that you're never going to sin again, not on the basis of your good works, but on the basis of the shed blood of Christ, the awesome power of the blood of Jesus to pay our sin debt in full. Now that you've become a new creature, a new creation, the Bible says, then what? You need to get in the Word of God and begin to read the Scripture and learn the ways of God and what He says about your new relationship.
You need to begin to pray. You say, well, I don't know how to pray. Talk to God. Tell him what you're thinking, how you're feeling. Ask him to show you himself, and he will do it. You need to be baptized. That is that is a command of our Lord Jesus Christ because it represents what's happened to you. You say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, here you were living in sin. You trusted Christ as your Savior. You were buried in baptismal waters. You rise to walk a new kind of life, which symbolizes what Jesus did. He died, he was buried, and he rose again. Now that you are saved, to read the Scriptures, be in the Word of God, to be baptized, to unite yourself with a church, not in the church, but a church where the Word of God is honored, where the Word of God is preached, where the Word of God is explained so you can grow in your Christian life. You see, if a person is not saved, it's because they have chosen to be disobedient to God, to be rebellious toward Him. And so the question is this, do you want life at its best? Do you want to die and go to heaven one of these days? Or do you want to live your life in rebellion, having it your way, and one of these days also die to stand before God and give an account for a life of total rebellion toward Him? Well, if you have any wisdom at all, you'll say, no, that's not the kind of life I want to live. I want a new life. I want to be sure that when I die, I'm going to heaven. I want the gift of eternal life. I want the Spirit of God living in me now, helping me in my life. Well, that can happen right now. And what I'd like to do is to simply lead you in a prayer, a simple prayer, but you have to mean it with all of your heart. If you will pray this prayer with me, the moment you pray this, asking Christ to save you, all that we've discussed transpires in a split second, and in that moment, you become a child of God. So let's pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I confess that I have sinned against you, that I am a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me for all my sin, not on the basis of my good works or what I will do, but what Jesus Christ has already done for me at the cross. I here and now receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and choose to live for Him the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed with me, then you've just received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your sins have been forgiven. Your destiny has been changed forever. You are now a child of God with your whole life in front of you. Nothing can compare to having an intimate relationship with God. Make your relationship with Him now the priority of your life. Obey God, leave all the consequences to Him. It's the key to living your life, your new life, at its very best.